The BCD M1 milliohm meter is designed to measure low electrical resistances to determine the condition of bonds and grounds. The meter was developed using input from over 1,000 surveys by aviation industry users. It is light, portable, and takes measurements quickly and accurately. This introduction will demonstrate some of the unique features and capabilities of the M1 milliohm meter. Be sure to carefully read the user manual before you put your meter to work. This is a highly sensitive piece of equipment that can be easily damaged if mishandled or abused. With proper care, your meter will function effectively for years. Inside the portable case containing your meter, you will find test results and a certificate of calibration. Every meter is tested for accuracy, reliability, and safety, including use on flight line and other designated hazardous locations. Your certificate of calibration confirms that your meter meets or exceeds all published specifications for the aerospace industry. You will find everything you need for taking measurements in the carrying case. The BCD M1 millihom meter, an M1 standard remote probe, an M1 conditioning charger and AC-DC adapter, and a user's manual. The meter is a versatile handheld instrument. Removing the protective cap exposes its probe tips. A plastic cap also protects the tips of the M1 standard remote probe. Maintaining the condition of these tips is essential for the meter to function effectively. The M1 milliohm meter makes readings by measuring the electrical resistance between probe tips. The meter will not display a reading unless the proper electrical continuity is established. You will either get an accurate reading or no reading at all. This demonstration will show how to use the M1 milliohm meter as it is most commonly used with one remote probe. First, you must connect the remote probe to the meter. Your meter will not operate unless this probe is connected. At the base of the handle of the meter, you will see two ports, one labeled dual and the other labeled single. Remove the cap covering the single port. Look closely. You will see that there is a small red dot in the center at the top of the port. Next, locate the red dot on the connector cable. Sometimes this dot may be hidden by the plastic sheathing housing the metal end piece. If you do not see the dot immediately, gently push on the cable to expose the metal end piece. Rotate the end piece until the dot comes into view. Line up the red dot on the meter and the red dot on the cable and insert the connector. Take your time with this. The pins of the connector are made of soft materials that can be easily damaged by force. Be very careful not to twist or jam the connector into place. If you line up the two red dots, the insertion will take place effortlessly and the connector will lock into place. Turn your meter on using the power switch on the handle. When the power is on, the red light above this switch is lit. You are now in operational mode and can begin taking readings. All readings are displayed in milliohms on the display panel. As you work, you may want to adjust the brightness of this panel to make it easier to read. You can do this by using the up and down arrows. Depress and hold the up arrow for more light or the down arrow for less. In order to take a reading, you must establish electrical continuity between the remote probe and the probe tips of the meter. There are lights on both the meter and the probe that indicate whether or not you have achieved continuity. Before taking a reading, make sure that these two lights are working. When you turn the power on, they should both light up red. To take a measurement, carefully apply the probe tips of the meter and the remote probe to the area you wish to test. Press all four tips with light force only. You will know that you have achieved continuity when the lights of the meter and the probe turn green and the display panel turns blank. You must maintain contact with both probes for about three to five seconds. When both of the green lights flash together, a measurement has been taken and will be displayed. If the light switches from green to red, this means that the continuity has been disrupted. The display panel will read ERR. When this happens, gently rock the tips back and forth or from side to side. This will penetrate the surface and give you the continuity you are after. It is very important not to twist or use excessive pressure on these tips. There are two other messages that may appear on your display panel while you are taking readings. If you see two green lights, but the display reads no go, 
This means that the meter cannot push a large enough current between the two probes in order to make a measurement. If you see the message, too big, this means that the measurement value is beyond the meter's range. In both cases, the meter will not give you a reading. Any reading you take will be displayed for about 10 seconds. After this, the display shuts down. You can recall the reading by depressing the recall button. It is important to remember that the M1 milliohm meter shuts off if there is no activity for three minutes in order to conserve the battery. If your machine shuts down, this will not affect any readings you have taken as long as you have stored them in the unit's memory. To store a reading, press the store button. The M1 milliohm meter stores readings by assigning a sequential tag number to each reading. You can store up to 128 readings. If you exceed this number, the display panel will read full. The meter will only store measurements sequentially. Except for the tag number, there is no way to identify which measurement corresponds with which part of your test surface. For this reason, you must keep track of where you started and the order in which you progress through your testing points. To review measurements you have stored, or to erase individual measurements, you need to be in memory mode. You enter memory mode from operational mode. If the display panel is active, press the recall button once. If the display panel is blank, press the recall button twice, once to reactivate the panel and the second time to enter memory mode. The meter will always show you the last reading you stored. To review previous readings, use the down arrow. Scroll to the tag number you wish to eliminate and press the erase button. The reading for that tag number will be replaced by the word ERAS. Once you have erased the measurements you want eliminated, you can return to operational mode either by waiting 5 seconds or by pressing the recall button. When you see two periods in the display panel, the meter is reverting to operational mode. If you wish to erase the entire memory, you can do this in operational mode. Simply press and hold the erase button until the word done appears in the display panel. If you enter memory mode and see the word no, this means that there are no entries in the memory. We have shown you the M1 milliohm meter as it is most frequently used with one remote probe. You might need to take a measurement in a location where the meter is too large to allow its probe tips to contact the test area. To take a reading in this situation, you need an additional remote probe. The M1 milliohm meter comes with one probe. A second probe can be included as an additional accessory. Beside the port marked single, you will find a port marked dual. Connect the second probe to this port just as you did when you were connecting the single probe by carefully matching up the red dots. Once you have connected the second probe, the red continuity light should be on. Now you can begin taking measurements. Instead of using the tips of the meter, use the tips of the two probes on your test area. When the continuity lights flash green, a measurement has been successfully made. Your M1 milliohm meter operates using NICAD batteries. You can check the power level of your battery by depressing and holding the power button when you turn your meter on. Your meter will operate within a range of 6.9 to 9.2 volts. When you see low B in the display panel, it is time to charge your battery. The battery charger is a special pulse charger and is designed to recharge M1 meters only. The cable connects to the meter using the port marked charge here. It is very important that you do not attempt to connect the charger to the meter using the single or dual remote ports. Although all of these ports look the same, the charge connector is 4-pin and the remote probes are 5. They are not interchangeable. You will damage the meter or the cable if you use the wrong port. Once you have connected your meter, a series of lights will tell you the status of your battery. You can charge your meter at any time. There is no need to drain the battery completely before doing this. The meter can remain connected to the charger even when fully charged. It cannot be used to take measurements while it is charging. If your meter is damaged or not working properly, do not try to fix it. Your M1 milliohm meter is not field repairable and you cannot replace the meter's battery. Any attempt to disassemble the meter will void its UL913 certification for operation in hazardous locations. 
If the meter is not working properly, return it to BCD Electronics Limited for repair. Your M1 milliohm meter is a unique high-performance instrument. Before you begin working, carefully review the user manual. If you have any questions, contact BCD Electronics Limited. With proper care and handling, your M1 milliohm meter will provide you with many years of trouble-free operation.